Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another beautiful Sunday. Yeah. Feels like summer has come back to Boca. Yeah. Just for today. <laughs> So uh, we are holding in chapter 18 of Tanya, which uh, the Alter Rebbe gets a little bit Kabbalistic. And I... Um, I uh, want to refer to this chart that was uh, that I gave everybody. If you have it at home, you should have this chart, beautiful chart uh, made by Elliot Klugman. We appreciate his hard work in coming out this chart. Do you really need a? You need to learn this chart. Uh, a lot of, a lot of time. A lifetime learning here. I, I'm making one change. You should make a change. So um, we have, uh, as it is said, the uh, Esses Fides are 10 manifestations, 10 uh, 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 concepts of, uh, of rays of light uh, that come out of Erdain Seif. These 10 rays of light are, 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 are divided into two, um, uh, which is uh, intellect uh, and emotions. The truth is, emotions itself is divided into two because it really is six emotions, and the seventh is called uh, is 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 a, is, a, is, a, is a vessel, is a uh, is is called malchus, which has actually this uh, this uh, this this level has in many word, many names because the truth is that this level, this fidesam malchus, is actually the vessel which everything comes into the all seven. All the nine previous revelations come into this, and because this is the ultimate way to uh, the way the Abishta, the way God through his Sfirot shine out to the next level, the Sfirah Samalchus, the aspect of Malchus kingship. Sfirah is a you have the Sfirah. A Sfirah is a revelation. It's a Sfirah oh. that shines. Uh, Sfirah is an emanation. I uh, I don't know what the uh, exactly uh, the right word to use. Uh, there's many different ways you can use the word Sfira, but Sfira is a concept, uh, Sfira is to count. Uh, Sfira, Sfira Sa Omer, the counting of the Omer. The uh, Sfira is a, is, a, is a concept of, uh, is a concept that it comes from the word Sapir, which means to shine. It means to shine. Sfira is something that shines. That's a reflector, so to say. So you have so if you have an infinite light of God, and it reflects through these attributes, you and the Shama is also the same thing. You have an Shama, you have a soul that reflects itself through these svirot, these uh, vessels that the light of God comes into, and it goes through wisdom. It shines in my wisdom, and ultimately in my understanding, and ultimately my knowledge. And then it comes to the six emotions of, of, of myself, said kindness, gavura, severity, strength, discipline, fear, or uh, teferis, beauty, glory, netzach is conquest, victory, and hoid is splendor, yusoid is foundation, um, and ultimately malchus, which is the kingship, authority, sovereignty. Which is the word which I mentioned at the uh, at the Tuba Shvat, that it's the word Adonai. So you have Yudke Vavke, which is beyond the any any sphere. Yudke Vavke is the past, present, and future. is infinite. It shows on in the beginning of of, uh, of what we can understand of, of the concept of infinite infinity, because infinity is something is above and beyond our comprehension. So the only way we can say it is we can say it. Past, present, and future. But the problem is, we say it at the same time, so that's also almost impossible. That is impossible to comprehend the past, present, and future at the same time because we live in time and space, and the there the is the past. The past, the future is unknown, and the it's only what you have is the present. This moment, this second. 
Um, I'm a little bit confused by the word emotions because really they're really just states of being, right? So why are they called emotions? Like I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm missing something. Emotions is is a con. Well, it, it, look at the word itself, so you'll understand what it is. The, the two major emotions are chesed and gevura. So emotions is a concept of kindness, or really it's av 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 love. So that's an emotion yeah. that I have a concept of love, a feeling of love. Um, uh, intellectual, when you have chachma, is more of a ethereal feeling. The difference between emotions and uh, and and uh, and uh, and chachma is the difference between what something that is cold, wet, and something that is hot. So intellectual is more cold and emotions is more hot. Passion. Passionate. It comes from an emotion. The truth is, in Chassidus, even though we say mind over matter, over emotions, mind over emotion, but everything comes from your, your heart. Everything comes from your heart, your desire of your heart. And if you have no emotion to anything, then you're not going to think about anything. So it's it's actually starts off in your heart that you have a certain desire. Maybe you should put certain desires in every single human being. He has a desire to live. He has a desire to procreate. He has a desire to uh, to have uh, to eat. That's a desire, right? A baby is born, and 10 seconds later, she's screaming, or he's screaming, she wants food. How does she know that? How did a child know that? How does an animal know that? How do they know that? Who taught them that they have to eat? Who gave them, you know, a person goes, he has dementia, he can go to a level, he doesn't, doesn't think he has to eat, or he should have to eat. Oh, it's a big, sad situation. They stop eating. <laughs> That means that within your being, there's a concept that you have a desire that your mind thinks it wants to eat. It's hungry. So where does it start from? It starts from the David to create it in your in your DNA that you have a desire to eat. Baruch Hashem, because if you didn't have a desire to eat, you would ultimately not eat. And you would ultimately, it's an instinct, it's a desire. So it's an instinct to eat. That doesn't come from your brain, it's above intellect. No. It comes to your will. It comes from higher your will. It comes from your desire. It comes from tiny. What gives you a delight in life? It's nature. It's a it's a nature. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a something that you it's, it's something that is that pulls you, okay, and it pulls you from day one. Yeah. So a person has a desire for pleasures. It's an instinct desire that he has a desire for pleasure, and then he starts thinking about pleasures. Yeah. And now he starts to create a greater desire in pleasure. So it comes from the heart, goes up to the mind. The mind starts to think about this, and it goes back to the heart. So that's what you have in Chesidus. You have your Torah in Chesidus in general. You have everything was given by God. Everything that you have in life, in, in the basic things of your life, is all given to you as a gift. Right, you think you uh, like things. You like things because God gave you that. That uh, that like, if you like a certain color, like people have their palettes. You know, they're green. They like red. They like white. They like the people has the 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 that gave you that. Abish gave you these these desires, these uh, innate desires, these inner aspects of desire. This chesed, this gevura, these things that you like or you dislike. Things that make you happy, things that make you sad. Self-understood, a king is happier and sad for different things than a common person, right? Intellectual person, a person who has more understanding, a person who's more idle, a person who's more refined, has desires in more refined things. While a person who's mundane and and, and very uh very uh I don't want to call it uh, extremely uh, uh, unsophisticated, 
but uh, is 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 happier in 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 in, in, un, in unsophisticated things. You cannot. Everybody has their level of what they're gonna desire for. Because what the Abish to made, the Abish to also gave you the levels of your neshama. What, how far and how deep your neshama can go. Hmm. How deep and how far your intellect can go. That's what we say in davening. das. The Abish to gave everybody their capacity of knowledge, and gave everybody the capacity of understanding. He gave each and every one of us our capacity. If you're going to try to push it more than that, you'll have a nervous breakdown. Go to what your capacity is. Don't try to overgo capacity. You're going to do what? You can pray. The Abishta wants to, to change it. It'll change it. But in Derechateva, they wish to put in the system exactly what you need to do and uh, what you need to accomplish in the world and what exactly you your nature needs to be to accomplish this mission in the world. And that's it. That's and don't cool. try to be somebody else. Don't try to be jealous of somebody else. Don't try to outrun somebody else. Don't try to outrun yourself. That's it. Don't try to outrun yourself. So be yourself, right? Know who you are. Know your capacities and do what you can do. Abish doesn't want you to do somebody else's of it. He wants you to do your of it. Yeah, you can say whatever you want. I don't want to interrupt. Um, so you don't interrupt this question. guy. I can speak for. Uh, you have to interrupt. Thank you. <laughs> um, but the question for me is like, how do I know if it's the Ace of Tov or the Ace of Horror telling me this is your capacity? Anything is godly is the Ace of Tov. Anything that is the opposite of godliness is the Ace of Horror. It's very simple. It's the opposite of godliness. It's the eight hundred. That's I, it. I finished. Physical example. I've been, I've been, you know, in this journey of being coming from. You know, I'm 27. I'm 70. Gonna be I've 74. been in this journey since I was born. So, I, mean, I, I still, I still don't life. know. So that's not your Aveda. Aveda, you can read English. That's why they have Hebrew and English, and you can read it in English. Davis understands English. He's very proficient in English. But everybody says the, you go to another level if you do it in Hebrew. I don't know. But not your level, so you don't have to go to that other level. So finish. <laughs> to your level is English. And that's your level. You don't have to kill yourself to, to do something you cannot do. Are you sure you don't have to put yourself down that you cannot reach that level? It says that that's not the level, and that's it. There was a famous story of the the Alshech and in Tzvas, the Alshech. It was uh, in Tzvas, there were two great... Uh, uh, I mean, there were many great entities in that time. In one time, there was two great uh, geniuses and Jewish leaders. There was the Beis Yosef. He was the one who wrote the Shulchan Aruch, and there was the Alshech. He was a great Kabbalist. And he was uh, in Tzvaz. They lived together. They actually davened in the same shul. Imagine the, 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 the Beis Yosef and the Alshech. These were two giants that were together in, in the same time in history. And uh, they davened, and they, they each gave their speech. So all the all the the Beis Yosef gave his speech on Shabbos, whatever morning. And Al Shuk used to give his drasha on Friday. And the Beis Yosef decided he's going to come to the Al Shuk to hear the speech of the Al Shuk. But he, whenever he came, he fell asleep. So the Al Shuk told him, "That's not your avoda. You don't. It's not your avoda. Your avoda is the Shulchan Aruch, Code of Jewish Law, the, the written law, and now my avoda is the spiritual uh, part. So you are going to fall asleep." So go, don't waste your time. Um, uh, do your Aveda and I'll do my Aveda. And that's uh, that's the uh, insan. So so everybody has the Aveda and everybody knows should know what the, their service is and to know this extremely clear. How much chesed you have, how much gavura you have, what is good chesed, what is bad chesed, what is good gavura, what is bad gavura. You know, what is anger? Where does your anger come from? Why you have anger? Depression, unhappiness, happiness, etc., etc. Yeah? This is quite unfortunate. Like, I can work with um, two psychologists, I work with people. Because of ancestral issues with the parents who were very limited, and maybe broke down to their children and didn't nurture them, didn't respect them, didn't build them, 
they end up having this limited belief that they're not good enough. Right. That they're not smart enough. Right. And and we work with people to help clear it yeah. and leave their missions. Right. That's the biggest problem. I agree. Yeah, that's the biggest problem. I 100% agree with you. And therefore, a person, ultimately, you have to tell a person that every person has their own mission, irrelevant to where they came from, even to have parents, good parents or bad parents. It doesn't make, change the mission which the Abishta brought down the Neshama. And therefore, they're irrelevant, in a way, to their parents. And uh, if they have good parents, then they're good. their parents gave the Neshama a boost, a help. The Nisham had a journey from day one that it was created on its own and uh, independent from the from anybody. But uh, it's best to have parents that give you your Nisham a boost, <laughs> give it the right uh, vessels and uh, the right capabilities. But the Nisham has that capability without it. <laughs> and therefore, the Alter Rebbe said in the time in the beginning that you could find that the Abishta gives a Nisham of a tzaddik to people that are Nishayim, to people that are wicked. Because the Abishah gives an Ashama yeah. and to parents that are not so holy. And they because God gives an Ashama, and therefore an Ashama was given to God by God, and therefore everybody has the potential. And the proof of the pudding is in the beginning, when Abraham, when God gave to Isaac, Yaakov and Esau, he gave to them two Nishamas, one that was wicked from day one, and one was that was righteous from where they won from the same parents. So what does that show you? That that's it. The child has its own identity. The child had no. The child had no. The parents also have to realize that. Yeah. That the child yeah. is righteous, not because of them. I mean, the child is righteous because the child is righteous because they she gave him righteousness. Mm -hmm. And if the child is struggling, it's not because of them per se. And they shouldn't make it. They should try to make it better. That's why they should be good parents and try to make it better. Try to inspire the kid that he can overcome his struggles. But sometimes parents they do the opposite. Whatever. Like I say, no parent is perfect. And no parent is, receives a manual before he has a child exactly what to do with this child. And uh, every parent has to do the best he could do. And, 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 and again, it's no, don't, there's not, it'll never be perfection in any, in any, in any, in any, in all this aspect. You can't blame your parents either because you don't know the parents. You have to know why your parents are saying these things. I don't know what they're going through in their life or their trauma, their parents. And their parents and their parents, and we're gonna blame it all the way up to uh, to to Avramovino, you know, uh, everybody. Yeah, they, that's it. Blame it all on Sarah, who threw your small out of the house. So we're gonna all blame it on on, on Sarah. So that's it. That's it. So take it all the way to Chava, you know, who ate from the tree, and if she wouldn't have eaten from the tree, exactly. you wouldn't have all the problems. So ultimately, as I say, we're always blaming women. So. Uh, that's it. It all started with the trouble. So it's not a it's a, that's a mistake. And that was the first thing they did. That's why Chava blamed it on Adam, on, the, on the snake. And Adam blamed it on Chava. And we blame it on somebody else. And there's no gain out of blaming it on somebody else, not even your parents. Okay, so everybody has these aspects in their life, these 10 manifestations. Every one of us was given free will. Every one of us has the capability of, of, of transformation, of, of, of control. Again, that's really what we're here to learn. But everything comes from above. <coughs> this, these, these concepts are all Lamaila. They're all above, which is called in Kabbalah, Seyder Ishtaushlus, the, the, the order of descent. There's a order of descent where the way the way the way the godliness comes from level to level, and ultimately this descent has the cap has the ultimately the capability for a godly concept, even my neshama, to come down into my physical body. That's one of the miracles of creation, that a neshama, a godly concept, can come into the physical this physical body, this physical entity. Thus, the truth is, every created being has this. So this table here. Is a, a physical. It's plastic, made out of plastic, which has within it some godly entity that's giving it existence, and that's why it's right over here right now. That's why there's a table in front of me. So everything comes milamila, even though I don't see the physical spiritual thing. Just like I don't see my neshama, I don't see the spiritual concept in this table. But how do I prove that there's a spiritual concept in this table? Just like how do I prove? To myself, that there's a spiritual concept in my in my in my in my belt is by 
using out the, the my, my myself as as a, for that spiritual entity that proves the point if i cannot do that then it, i have then there's no proof to that point understand if i don't use this table out for aspect of kedusha then i don't believe that there's anything holy in this table i don't need to use a table out for kedusha of anything holy because the table is a physical table what does the table care if i uh, sit on it and plan uh, terrible things or what does this table care if I would sit on it and I'm learning Tanya today? It matters, it matters to the table. So why? Because I believe that behind this table, the reality of this table, the existence and it, of this table is a godly concept. Right. So thus, like I believe that the existence of my being is a godly concept. And if I believe that the existence of my being is a godly concept, then I should overcome all concepts. Now, how you can ask the question, how can I overcome my physical uh, handicap? Or how can I overcome my my uh, my mental situation? What do you mean? If you're a godly concept, then you can overcome anything. But if I don't believe I'm a godly concept, then it's a problem. How do I overcome this physical reality? How do I overcome this emotional trauma? How do I overcome this physical challenge? I need a, I need a, how do I, I can't overcome it. Only you can overcome with something physical, but I don't have the physical tools to overcome this, the, 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 this challenge. The only way you can overcome this challenge is if I believe that I'm a spiritual concept, that I'm a godly soul. So if I'm a godly soul, God can handle all, all concepts. He can overcome all concepts. Reality of living in the physical world, or are you moving into the box of living life? Okay. Mission, Same thing. Exactly. So, exactly. Here, exactly. Here, exactly. The so, the question is it, am I, I have to ask the question in a way Am I Zalman Booker or am I Chesed? Am I expressing Chesed? It's not about Zalman Booker, it's about Chesed, the attribute of Chesed. If I'm expressing Zalman Bukit, well, Zalman Bukit has limitations. And Zalman Bukit likes to give to this one, doesn't like to give to that one. He doesn't like this person, doesn't like that person. He doesn't like people in general, maybe. He's depressed in, in, in reality. So how can he be a giver if he's a depressed individual? Or how can he be a, a, a giver if he's a confined individual? He has, he has physical handicaps. How can he be a giver? He cannot be a giver. He cannot be chesed. And that's the way he might think in the physical world. That's where I am. I cannot do it. But if you live, if you understand the attribute of chesed, chesed is not limited by the by the physical. You know, in all aspects, there's many ways of doing chesed, and there's many ways of overcoming doing chesed in different kinds of ways, whether it's physical or unphysical, in a physical way, in a, in a speaking way, in an emotional way. There's a many ways of doing chesed. So you can, I can do chesed in a in a in a in a in a, in a way that uh, I, I when I don't have all my physical capacities. There's a great rabbi living today in California that um, that teaches Torah with his eyes. See, rabbi in California he teaches Torah. Rabbi Horowitz, Shabbat Shalom, with his eyes. He's he's ALS. Oh. And he's totally, uh, totally Camu. Wow. And he teaches, yeah. he writes every week a Torah lesson with his eyes. It's amazing. And it's hard to believe, but it's an amazing thing. Technology. And uh, technology right. and the desire of a human being to overcome all his obstacles. And nobody should be challenged by that. But uh, but the point is, you see a person that is uh, living with his eyes. And it's truly, truly amazing. And that's it. So that shows you that Taylor has no limits. There's no limits. As long as you're in this body, you can figure out a way to overcome those obstacles and to, to live life and to, to, to spread what he was a, he was a rabbi, to, uh, to spread Yiddishkeit that was his life with and, and happiness and joy. If you, I get his, I get his, his Taylor every week. And um, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. I wish more people could write the Dvar Torah with their hands, uh, with the uh, 
regular, but this is uh, unbelievable. He writes unbelievable divitator with his eyes. So that shows on the concept that your neshama, your shama, your chesed, your kinds that you want to share, your tater, all these things are above all your physical realities. Maybe should give him a full shleimer. He should be healthy and well, and he should be able to uh, teach tater with his mouth. But that would be the best situation. It's very hard. It takes him like hours and hours, sorry, to write this Dvar uh, Teda with his eyes. Oh, but that that only that only a person can do if he realizes that his neshama is greater than his guf. You understand? His neshama is not limited only to his guf. His neshama is above his body greater than his body, uses out the body, and the neshama wants to use out the body in any kind of a way that it can, in any kind of situation that it can. It's not limited. Right? It's not limited like the body thinks that it's limited. So that's really the, to understand, is to understand, I mean, this concept, this essence fitters, is really to understand who you really are. And 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 not to, to, to fall into the trappings of the body, which most of us do. We get, we become depressed. We, we can't do something. We, we can't accomplish something. We become angry. We become depressed. We become despondent. We become whatever. We use out all our uh, emotions in a negative way. And again, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't uh, condemn any people that have challenges. Uh, we all have challenges, and um, uh, we all have to learn see this to uh, to connect to the upper worlds. So let's read it inside the Tanya over here. Let's read inside of Tanya, because what it's written over here in Tanya, you have in this piece of paper. And the more you know this piece of paper, and more than this piece of paper, uh, you, you'll understand the Tanya. You'll have a, a, a more of a, a deeper feeling to what the Alter Rebbe is saying. So we're holding in the bottom left column uh, on page 76 in the chapter 18 of Tanya. Explanation is as follows. The patriarchs were truly a chariot of God Alter Rebbe is telling us, how do we give an inheritance to another person? How did the patriarchs have the power to give inheritance? You can understand, inheritance is money. <laughs> that's, how we, that's how we translate inheritance. And we translate inheritance, cash. Right? What else are we going to get inherited? I'm going to inherit your, my, my parents' feelings. I'm going to inherit my parents' emotions. I'm going to inherit my parents' intellect. I'm going to inherit cash. If there's no money, there's no inheritance. But uh, the Tater's inheritance is not that. If you look, if you read the Tater, the Tater says, I, the Tater says to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that I'm going to inherit to your children. Yeah, after he tell he talks about Tater mitzvahs as an inheritance, that we are the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They inherited something to us. I have no physical entity of Avram Avinu in my house. I didn't inherit uh, his money. Um, uh, right? And he says, for example, you, uh, you know, did you, and, and that was the greatness of Avram Avinu, because not that they gave over in any inheritance. It doesn't say that, they, in essence, they gave over in any inheritance. They gave actually as a gift. Avram Avinu gave everything to Yitzhak as a gift before he died. Didn't leave over any inheritance. He gave it out. Really, a person should uh, give it out. Why should you? Why should you? Uh, you don't know what the person like the Gemara says. You know what the next generation is going to do with your your inheritance. Right? You have desires. You have when it comes to Daka, you're relying on the next generation to do that. They'll take your money. They'll go gamble. How do you know they, they, they're not going to do that? So you should better give it the money, do it the money, what you're supposed to, what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, and then and, and, and accomplish that way. Abraham Avinu gave all his inheritance. He gave all his, but it's not inheritance because he was alive. He gave all his money to Yitzchak. He gave his son. He had another son, Yishmael. He had another six children. He had seven children. Yeah, can I know he had eight children of Ramavino? Eight children. Some people say he had to go with each child, so he had 16 children. So uh, he had a big family, Baruch Hashem. 
But he gave he gave all his money while he was alive to Yitzchak as a gift. Matana, not inheritance. You can't give inheritance to somebody, somebody when you're alive. He gave it as a gift. So nobody can add, can argue on that. It's my money, and I can give one child all my money to as a gift. The other children feel. <laughs> I understand. But what, what is it? You're, you're in Ghanaian now. What are you worried about how your children feel? Uh, well, Abraham's going to leave his money, he's going to leave it to, to, to Yishmael or to Yishmael, and they're going to use it for Avedah Zara. That's what he wants. If your children, you know, you're clear, your children are going to give to Daka and they're going to use good thing, I understand. Well, you know what your children are going to do with it. Now they take your money and they use it out for who knows what. That gives you neshama, any kind of uh, satisfaction. Today, people don't want to give charity because they're worried about the, who to give the Yerusha. People are, they don't want to give charity because they need to give it to their children. Unless your children are charity, uh, uh, they need your charity. So give them charity now. Why wait till you have 120 to give them charity? If they need money now, give them charity. Charity starts at home. That's a famous uh, expression. So give it them now. Why wait till after 120 to give them charity? Give them the money now. Give them a matana now. But I'm not going to give charity. Why? Because my children after 120, the Baruch Hashem have their own money. Give tzedakah. First, is hold back from tzedakah. What's going to happen after 120? You hold back from the mitzvah now because, but that's what people are. People have this concept in mind. They can't give their money to the doc even because of what's going to be with their children. You'll have more money. <laughs> That's okay. Very good. You'll have more money. Or maybe you'll save your children from having fights after 120 years old. I don't know the Yerusha. Correct. How do we get into Yerusha? Okay, right. So the parent, so the Avram Avinu inherited the Yidin Taylor. Mitzvahs. They inherited the Yidin, not Taylor Mitzvah, the Abisha gave Taylor Mitzvah to Yidin. They inherited the Yidin, the concept of the Ava to Taylor Mitzvahs. The Ava Sasha. They inherited the Yidin, the Ava. Avram Avinu inherited the Ava, the love of Yiddishkeit. Yitzhak Avinu inherited the, the strength in Yiddishkeit. And Yaakov inherited the Yidin, the Emes, the Tferas, the beauty of Yiddishkeit. That's they, what they inherited. So you, that's what the Gemara says. If, you, if a Yid doesn't have three things, he's not a Baishanim, Rachmanim, a Gemel Chasadim. If they don't have Baishanim, they're not embarrassed, they're not, emo, they're not, they're not embarrassed, they have no, no, uh, no mercy. Rachmanim. Game Chasad, no kindness, then they the question of Tabni Avram it's because that's their inheritance. So they, they inherited the year that he has Ava. Whether it's Ava to somebody else, he has Rahmanis, whether it's Rahmanis to his Nashama, some Rahman to somebody else. But by Shonim, they have humility. They have humility to God. Mamina bin Maminim. That's the Muna. A Muna is humility. So a year has humility, he has a Muna Sashem. That's what they inherited. The Abishta gave them when 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 you have a spiritual relationship with the, when you yourself have a spiritual relationship, where'd you get that spiritual relationship? Where'd you get that Avas Hashem? Where'd you get that capability of Mesilas Nefesh to be able to go above yourself? Who gave you these these capabilities? The Abish says, I gave who gave I gave it through Avram Avinu. I gave these capabilities through Avram. Lazaroi. I gave them the, 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 to his seed. To his seed, I gave him these DNA capabilities. And the world knows that, right? The world demands on Jews to have more mercy than they than they demand on themselves. Right? They give us none, but we have to have mercy. But they're right. In a way, they're right because we are, we we stuck up. We do, and we do. Of course, we're Rachmanim. We're Rachmanim. That's the, that's it. We're Rachmanim. Even in war, we're Rachmanim. Because we're, we're in a way, like he said in Az Yashda, Abish says 
we meant to mention in in the in the Oz the Abish is Ishmachama, but he has Rahmanis in Machama. He's Rahmim. He doesn't have uh, he doesn't lose his Rahmanis in a t- in time of war. And that's the that's who he is. He's a main Rahmim. He has Rahmanis. You will see that if the Israeli soldiers. 100%. 100%. But we're, but, uh, we're condemned for <laughs> So this is all inheritance. It's the, 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 you, you, we have inherited this concept. You, you should realize this inheritance that we received. And the Abish they gave, uh, and the Torah t- says it openly. It's not like a, it's, 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 I'm telling you something, a spiritual thing. You can look in the Torah itself. The Torah says that the Abish that gave Avraham bin Lazaracha that your offsprings forever, Le'olam, will be part of your 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 DNA, will be part of you, part of you, and that's what we call Avraham Avinu. We call Yitzhak Avinu, not because we're just trying to give honor to these people. No, because the Torah says Torah calls Av- Avraham Avinu because just like everybody understands that they have a part of their parents, Yitzhak Avinu, because they have a part of their parents. We have a part of these, 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 these patriarchs and matriarchs. We're part of their being. And they were such tzaddikim that they abish their promise that they would be part of their offsprings. And the truth is, it's tzaddikim throughout history. We, as I say it always, we live with Moshe Rabbeinu, we live with the Rambam, we live with these tzaddikim. The Rebbe, the Sadiqim, who were spiritual concepts, who gave Yerusha to everybody who wanted to play Yerusha, to everybody who wanted an inheritance, part of their existence. So if you want to be part of their, their existence, they'll, they'll give it to you. That's what's called in Kabbalah, Ibur. That they you become part of a Tzaddik, they impregnate you, so to say. They become part of your existence. Dovik, that's how you learn the Gemara. The Gemara says, "Va'atem hadvekim Hashem alekecha." How you cleave to the Abish to cleave to Tzadik? So the Ava of a Tzadik is much greater. If you cleave to the Tzadik, you get a greater Ava. You 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 get a greater love, a greater love of God, a greater gevura, a greater fear of God. Because these tzaddikim were, were about giving. They were about giving. They were not about self. They were about giving. Like Avram Yitzhak, it was about giving. Avram, Avram didn't want anything. Avram Avinu received nothing for himself. You understand? Avram Avinu received nothing for himself. He did it all for what's going to be in the future. That's how you see the greatness of Avram Yitzhak. They were most never. They gave up everything. They fought for Why? Because the merchant and the children are going to have mutton tater. They didn't receive the tater. They didn't receive Eretz Yisrael. They received nothing. They received a bunch of promises that they never received anything. They knew there was going to be a mutton tater? They were promised that. They were promised that. So that, that's their children. So here they were getting, what, not even their children. It's their great four, their children, children, children. Ten generations, seven generations. But that's a tzaddik. A tzaddik is not about himself. It's about God. And it's about everything. It's about every Jew. It's about every generation. It's about the old, it's about all generations. That's what I say. Yesterday, the the the, the Moshe Rabbeinu, this is not the song. Oz Yashir, the song is ultimately gonna be when Mashiach comes. That's the song. So his song is still has not been sung yet. This is thus the prelude to the song. Amen. That would be very convincing. Yeah. 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 So we live with the Rebbe. But, it, but like it so do the people like like let's say you you you. We learned it. I was teaching. You're a rebbe and you're sadik. Oh, and, and we continue to learn with him. But we continue to learn with the rebbe. I'm sure other rabbis that you 
I don't have a, I, I sure have other rabbis. I need to ask a question right now, somebody. I have to ask somebody. But uh, but the Rebbe's teachings live on, and, and, and the Rebbe continues to live on. Because what's the Rebbe? The Rebbe is his teachings. A uh, Rebbe is a teacher. That's what you call a Rebbe. A Rebbe means a teacher. A Rebbe is a teacher. Moshe Labainu is his teaching. I never know what Moshe Labainu looked like. Uh, I never met him. But I live with Moshe Labainu every, every day. Moshe is true, and his tight is true. So therefore, I have no... Uh, I don't live with Charles Nelson, trust me. I live with I live, I live with Moshe Labenu. I live with him like he's uh, like he's uh, here right now. Because uh, I understand, I'm an intellectual person. I understand that Moshe is not as uh, his Moshe, not the physical Moshe. It's not important the physical Moshe. It's important the, the teachings of Moshe. Imagine I had a physical Moshe and he didn't teach us anything. So what would, what would be? What would be the value? Who would rem who would remember him? Yes. I'm learning Chumash every day <laughs> to learn, to learn, to learn, to learn. So to learn, to learn, to learn. Moshe Emes, you said it yesterday in davening. You said it yesterday in the. You say it. I'm saying you said it today in davening. You say it every day. You said it yesterday in the laning. By Yaminu Bashem Ube Moshe Avdei. By Yaminu Bashem Ube Moshe Avdei. And they believed in God and they believed in Moshe, his servant. That's it. It's a plastic in the Torah. That's it. Moshe, you're not making Moshe a God. Chas v'shalom. But Moshe Rabbein is a tzaddik. And so too, the, the Moshe Rabbein is a tzaddik means that he, he cleaved to God. And he, he understood the godliness. And he betrayed Yiddish Torah. Everything that we have is from Moshe Rabbein. The Gemara says, Koma shevasik, whatever, anything that any sage set throughout history was given to Moshe Misenai, was already given to Moshe Rabbeinu, was already given. Moshe Rabbeinu gave everything. Matter of said things in general things, and ultimately we come out particular things were revealed generation to generation. But everything was given on Allah Moshe Misenai. Everything was given already from Moshe Misenai. That's the Pasuk, what Shlomo Melo said, Ein chodosh tachas Hashemes, right? There's nothing new under the sun. Like what does the Gemara say? It means there's nothing new under the sun. Because Moshe Rabbeinu is the sun. And Chadash Tachas Hashem. There's nothing new under Moshe Rabbeinu. Everything is regurgitated. Everything is being revealed. There's, ain't Chadash Tachas Hashem. there's nothing new under Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu gave the Eden the entire Tater. So Moshe Rabbeinu gave Tater to Eden. Tater Mitzvah. The others gave us the others gave us our emotions. The others gave us our essence. How do we use the tata? How do we bring the beauty of the tata? How do we take the knowledge of tata and use it out through our chesed and gavura and teferes? How do we express it? Because without the others, you wouldn't know how to express the tata. Now we know. Now we can take the chachma. Moshe Ben was a chabadnik. Chachma bina das, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and the others was chesed gevura tferes, and together we have a beautiful uh, combination of a true reality comes into a true reality. And without that, if I don't have the others, I don't have the I don't have the Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm missing something in this in in this in this in this in this uh, journey. It's impossible to do with, without both of them. I need both of them to do. To do accomplish that. The difference is the Moshe Rabbeinu is one guy, and he have to have three of them. Avraham Yitzchak Moshe Rabbeinu when it comes to Chachma. There's only one concept. There's only one Chachma. There's only one Emes. You can't have three entities. When it comes to your emotions, you can have uh, different things. Chesed, Gevura, Tiferes. When it comes to Chachma, you mean Chachma and Bina and Bina. There's no, these three things that go together. Without the, they don't. They're one entity. In Chachma, everything is one. Could you say that when we connect to that eternity, we rise above the sun? The sun, the sun, the sun of Adam. Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't want you to serve the sun. Moshe Rabbeinu wants you to serve the creator of the sun, which is the Abishta. That's what he can, but Moshe Rabbeinu revealed the capability to connect with my go above it 100%. 100%. He says, by mean of Hashem, Moshe Abde, it doesn't mean that to serve Moshe Rabbeinu like to serve the Abishta. Class for sure.
Okay, let's see the words over here. Let's go to the Tanya. Peter, which truly the carrier of God, and therefore they merited the blessing of transmitting their descent to their descendants, coming after them forever. This was this was. Right? We say it again every day in Davin. The merit of our, of our matriarchs and patriarchs. These were not simple people. Coming after them forever. The Nefesh, Ruach, and the Shama for the ten holy spirits of the four worlds of Atzilus, Bria, Yitzir, and Asir. To each according to his action, according to his works. So the 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 the, the Avis reached up all the way to the world of Atsilas. The Avis reached up. Maybe I cannot reach up to the world of Atsilas. I can only reach up to the world of Asiya. That's the highest I can go. I'm I understand my limitations. So therefore, I uh, my limitations might reach up to a very limited aspect of spirituality. You understand, and therefore all my emotions and my my spiritual understanding is all in the basic concepts. But it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make ultimately it doesn't make a difference because all these four worlds are interconnected, and that's why he divides it into ruach, nefesh, ruach, neshama. When the ten holy spirits, spirits of the four worlds, the nefesh, that means in essence, I have this four worlds. Each and every world has five levels of the neshama, that, that, which is the garments of, the, of these worlds. That's why you can have an neshama datzilas. You can have an neshama debriya. You can have a neshama de yitzira. And most of us are neshama dasiya. Our neshama is a very on the bottom pole of, of spirituality. It's in the bottom bottom pole of, uh, of of the spiritual world, the worlds. So we have chokhma dasiya, we have chokhma, the wisdom of the world of action, and that's the highest level of chokhma I might reach. That means the spiritual wisdom. Of this physical reality. That's Chachma Dasiya. Chachma, you have Asiya, the world of action, is a, has a spirit is a spiritual concept, but it's 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 its physical reality is the Asiya, this world. Right? It's it's bad it's, it's its connection is the world of this this world. From from the world of spiritual world of Asiya comes actually this physical world. So therefore, I come uh, the question is where my Nisham, so my Nishama. It also comes from one of these four worlds that comes into my body. Where did my neshama come from? It might come from the world of Asiya. And therefore, my neshama, my chachma can reach up to the highest wisdom in the world of action. Might not be able to go even to the world of emotions. It's too high for me. And the proof it's too high for me because I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you said there are four levels, right? But you said it in Hebrew that way. I don't know what you're If you have in your paper, right side, Atsilas, Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya. Four, four worlds, four spiritual worlds, which is a concept of the four dimensions of, of, of say, the, the way the soul, the way everything comes down ultimately into this physical world. What's not obvious in the chart is that. Each world has ten spheres. Right, That's each world has ten spheres, and each world has four, or five levels of the soul. Wow. So each world has ten spheres, and each world has five levels of the soul. <laughs> if you don't know what world you're in, that's my point. If you don't know what world you're in, then you're at least in the world of Asiya. <laughs> that world you know you're in because you're in the world of action. So that's where you know where you where if you cannot go higher, it means if you cannot have Ava Sashem, then you're not in the world of of of, of You're in the world of physicality. You're in the world of where physicality talks to you. 
and you're trying to find some spirituality in this physicality. We're Ikfis and Mashiach. We're the generation that is uh, the hill. The world of Asiya. It's nothing wrong. There's nothing. Uh, there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing uh, depressing about that. It's nothing depressing about that. As the Alter Rebbe says, it's not the Alter Rebbe says, it's nothing depressing about that. Because ultimately, when you talk about spiritual worlds, they're all interconnected. So you cannot divide the world, even though in Kabbalah we divide the world, that's only the way we understand it. But ultimately, in spirituality, there's no up and down, there's no side and left and right and left and higher and lower. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. So you have Ganeid Natachten. And you have Ganadin and Elian. In Ganadin, you have the lower Ganadin. And then you have the higher Ganadin. So the lower Ganadin is the world of Asi and Yitzira, and the higher Ganadin is the world of Bria. But again, we're talking about spiritual worlds. <laughs> so high mm -hmm. and low, it doesn't mean the guy is upstairs and you're downstairs. <laughs> That's what you'd say over here. Oh, we have, look at our four-story building. Which level are you on? Right? For level four, you have to have a key. You ever go to these buildings? There's a certain levels, you have to have a key. You know, the, the penthouse. penthouse. In the yeah. penthouse, you have to have a key. That means you can't get into the penthouse. You can go to any floor. You can't get into the penthouse. So the truth is, in these worlds, you can't get into the second level without a key. You got to have a key to go to the first level. <laughs> You gotta have a key to go to the world of Asiya. Then you have to have a special key to go to the world of the world of Yitzira. And you have to have a special and, and the penthouse Atsilas. Okay. You're gonna have to have uh that is the that is the key to all keys. No, most Sadiqam in the world of Bria. Bria is the world of creation. Okay. All right. Even the most worthless of worthless of men. And the sinners of India, Israel are thus in doubt at the time of the marital union with any, at, at any rate, with a nefesh and a ruach and a shama, malchus tasiyah. So ultimately, everybody, if you want to go back to the lowest level in Kabbalah, is that means you're going to receive uh, a neshama, your, your parents are uh, terrible people, the biggest sinners are the Jewish people. The Yerav Menavat, uh, give whatever you want to pick anybody in the history, a bad guy and a bad woman, and uh, and 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 they got together and they had these children. They ultimately bring a soul down from Malchus of the world of action, the lowest level of the world of action. They're going to bring in a shaman down from there, and that's what the the union is going to accomplish. Nefesh which is which is the lowest grade of holiness in the world of Asiya. So they say, so now, is that fear for the child? Is that fear for the child that the child got this low-grade soul? I mean, what do you want for the guy that has a, a neshama of Malchus of the world of Asiya? What do you want for this guy? <laughs> but Aldo never says. Because ultimately... Nevertheless, since the latter is of the ten spheres, is compound in all of them, including the Chachma, the Asiyah, wisdom. So ultimately, Chachma is in Malchus, like I told you. Chachma is ultimately in that. It means Chachma of the world of Asiyah is in Malchus of the world of Asiyah. Wisdom of the world of Asiyah is in the Kinch of the world of Asiyah. And where does wisdom from the world of Asiyah come? It comes from Malchus of the world of Yitzira. Where does the Malchus of the world of Yitzhida come? It comes from the Chachma, from wisdom of the world of Yitzhida. And ultimately, everything comes from from uh, from uh, from uh, from uh, from uh, from Chachma, the world of Atzilus, for Neirin Seif. So therefore, ultimately, everything comes from Neirin Seif. Everything comes from God. So what does it make a difference? What does it make a difference? We're in close, Chachma Malchus Atzilus, wisdom of the world to the world of emanation, incorporating Chachma Atzilus, wisdom of the world of emanation, which is illuminated by the actual light of earth and safe, but who, as is written, the Lord has founded the earth on wisdom and he has made them all with his wisdom. Thus, it comes to pass that ain't safe, blessed be he, is garbed as it were 
in the wisdom of the human soul of whatever sort of Jew he may be. So here, the Alter Rebbe empowered every single one of us that it doesn't make a difference where you think. And the, the, the truth is that you don't know where your soul comes from. And I don't know where your soul comes from. But it doesn't make a difference. Even if you're going to convince yourself that you're the lowest of lowest of souls, it's still in your low, low soul. Is ain't safe. Is infinite. Is the infinity of God is in the soul. And therefore, you're walking peace of a Kaddish Baruch Hu within you. But there's real judgment about like big if a, a world about Asiya. What means judgment? In other words, you're saying Asiya is lower than Yitzira. Right. So but it, but it, it, again it is not good in enough. spirituality, everything is one. There's no lower or higher. It's thus revelation. So it's a concept of revelation. That's it. It's not a concept of higher and lower. So that's why the tzaddik, how do, how do you express the greatness of Moshe Rabbeinu? That he was humble. To him, to a tzaddik, there's no such thing as higher and lower either. By him, a simple Jew and himself is the same thing. They have those different purposes. So there's no higher and lower. In the purpose of God, God needs Moshe Rabbeinu, and he needs a simple Jew too. And who And the problem is, to the simple Jew, you have to convince that. You don't have to convince that to God, and you don't have to convince that to a tzaddik either. Because a tzaddik knows that. Because a tzaddik is living in a spiritual world in the present time. And by him in a, living in a spiritual world, he understands that concept, that there's no concept of hierarchy. There's concept of purpose. That's humility. There's, yeah, there's come to the purpose. In the concept of purpose, in the concept of purpose, you need the garbage cleaner, just like you need the professor. You might say, oh, the professor is greater than the garbage cleaner, but you know what? You might live. You might be able to live without the professor. You can't live without the garbage cleaner. <laughs> That's true. Yes, that's true. So to the to, so to the so to the to the, the tzaddik, he understands that the, the the great sage and the and the, and, the, and the simple Jew that's a water carrier is equal because they're both doing their purpose. Hopefully, they're both doing their purpose, and maybe the the, the water carrier is doing the purpose more than the, than the sage, because the sage has fallen into his own delusion. Of his greatness. While the water carrier is not delusional. He knows that he's a water carrier. So that's why the Baal Shemta came out to bring the greatness of simple Jews. Because a simple Jew knows that he's simple. It's the great sage who forgets maybe that he's simple too. To God, we're all simple. So to God, we all can agree that to God, we're all stupid. I wouldn't call you stupid. But we're all, that's why, behemoth, see him to God, we're all simple. We're all unknowledgeable. Maybe to Sage, to me, he's knowledgeable and I'm not, I'm not knowledgeable. But to God, we're both un, we both have no knowledge. My thought is not your thought. That's why Hashem needs us all. That's why he needs us all, 100%. Yeah. And again, most of us can talk ourselves in. We're worthless. Somebody told <laughs> us we're worthless. Or somebody uh, heard us. So we're worthless. Comes the English as we need. <laughs> I created yeah. you because I needed you. <laughs> I created you to will for my purpose. So to me, you are the most important thing. And Moshe Rabbeinu cannot accomplish what I need you for. Yeah. And Moshe Rabbeinu understood that. And therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu, when it came to destroy Hashem, the sinners of Jews, he says no. He says no. Even Avram Avinu didn't understand that. Moshe Rabbeinu says no. Can't do that. <laughs> if you're going to do that, erase me. Because then I, yep. I understood the Teda as a whole different concept. 
So if I understood the Torah correct, that it's all about God, it's about God, and it's about God, it's about purpose. So then, then even the sinner has a purpose. Right. Yeah, but now let's say with what's going on, their purpose is to let's say annihilate the Jewish people. So that's a that tells that's you, upon it comes to kill you, you have to kill them. Back to Rabbi Kibachi, eradicate evil. You know what? When even the story I just told you, Moshe Rabbeinu said, forgive everybody. Then he went and gathered the Yidden the Levies together. They killed 3,000 people. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, that story, right? Hey, yeah. Shem, right? That's the story. Hey, yeah. God says, I'm going to wipe out the people. Moshe says, no, you cannot do that. And then <laughs> he, gets, he says, Mila Shem Eli, right? Who and the tribe of Levi goes and they kill out 3,000 people. Yeah, well, if the golden calf, they kill out 3,000 yeah. people. If the Moshe Rabbeinu screams to God, you have no... So that's the point. The, 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 Moshe Rabbeinu says today, but you have to forgive everybody. Mm -hmm. Now you come down the Mata, Moshe Rabbeinu says, we have to eradicate evil. Jews? And they, yeah, yeah, were Jews. 3,000 Jews? What do you mean? They were Jews. What do you mean? They killed out 3,000 Jews. Look at the Pasuk. Uh, that's a Medish, whatever. Whatever. They killed 3,000 Jews. What do take about the same Pasuk? Yep. That's it. So why? Because you got to get rid of evil. Doesn't make a difference. Somebody does evil. There's a best thing. You have to get rid of evil. But the Abishta, Mitzad Kodesh Baruch Hu, Mitzad the Abishta, he has to, he should forgive everybody. The Abishta should forgive everybody. And therefore, the Abishta does forgive everybody. The Rebbe said yesterday, uh, it was a beautiful thing that Rebbe spoke last night about uh, jail. I will put this video about going about jail. It's very interesting. Uh, sicha. So that said, the Mishnah, it says that, uh, you know, there, there are punishments in the Torah. There's no jail in the Torah. But there are punishments, whether it's Malchus and uh, even death. You find the Torah death. Why, why would the Torah do a, 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 a punishment of death? Because to give you Gan Eden. To give you Gan Eden, maybe you're cut off in this way, you're not cut off in the Abish to but the Abish says, I'm gonna put you to death in this world because I don't want you cut, I don't want you to be cut off for me. Because uh, to me, you're good. So you cannot, for whatever reason, you did something in this world that you have to pass a shalom. Be put to death, but that's because I want to be always connected to you. That's why you have to go through this because I don't want to be you to be cut off from me. What about those three thousand Jews, though? So they had Gan Eden. Mm -hmm. They have Gan Eden. Why? Because you talk right in the physical world. You have to eradicate evil, but not that the evil uh, by me. I love everybody, even if you're evil. My Shabbat is right. I forgive even those people that are evil. So I love everybody. What? There's always an exception to the rule. <laughs> I'm, talking about, I'm talking about I'm talking about Yidin right now. I'm not talking about Amalek. I'm talking about Yidin. I'm talking about Yidin. What about you? Uh, uh, God forbid a, a person has a child and did the worst evil. Well, he, he hates him. He hates the action. He doesn't hate him. He loves every Jew. He doesn't hate. He doesn't hate the Jew. But you he hates the action. The action has to be rectified. The action has to be. What do we do? Well, no choice. You say they're evil. Their actions are evil. Right, but you're not saying you're saying they're their, evil. Their actions. I'm sorry. So change the word. Their <laughs> actions are evil. No, I'm just having a hard time. That's the way the Abish looks at it. Yeah. That's the way the Abish looks at it. Their actions are evil. The Abish knows the essence of everybody. It's hard for us to see that. We see a person do, a Jew does a murder, or he does a terrible sin. We don't see it. We see the action. But the Abish says, I separate the action from the... The Abish wanted not to separate the action. He wanted to destroy the Jewish nation, everybody. But Moshe Rabbeinu says, no, you're the Abish. What do you mean? If, I'm the, if the Tate is correct, then the Tate says the opposite. Right? If the if the Torah is correct and it do, doesn't fit in the Torah, because the Torah the Abishta is above uh, time and space, and therefore the Abishta goes to the essence, and the essence everybody's perfect. So the Abishta says you're right. That's correct. That is correct. 
And therefore, the Rebbe said, uh, say that the Rebbe said that if a person is put to death in the Torah, it's not because the Ebishter, it's also chesed. It's all chesed. Because the Ebishter loves the Yid. He said, I have to give you this because I want to give you something, because I need to give you Gan Eden. I want you to have, uh, I want you to have Nachai Nitzchim. I want you to have spiritual life. If I, you're not going to have, if I'm not going to give you this punishment, you're not going to have a spiritual entity. You'll be, you'll be mushka, you'll be connected with impurities that will never change. Has for shalom. God forbid. So the Abishta wanted, God wanted, what I'm trying to tell you, is that the Abishta wanted that we should look at life through a spiritual life. And you should understand this. Because this is, not, this is only a reflection of God. It's not the essence of God. You want to talk the essence of God. self the city, we're going much higher than this child. But even in this child alone, everything over here is godly. So therefore, ultimately, Gevura is also godly. And if it's godly, then there's purpose. Right? If, it's, if, if, there's, if it's no purpose, or it's the opposite of purpose, then it's not godly. That's what the Rebbe says. There's no concept of jail in the Torah because it's ungodly. Why is it ungodly? Because it's taking a person, it's taking away his, 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 his choice, his capability of purpose. Yeah, but he's evil. And that's why... If he's evil, he belongs in jail. No, if he, per- if he killed somebody, he put him to death. There's no redemption. It's punishment. There's no punishment. There's no punishment. There's no we, prison actually was called before it was called prison it was called what's the other name of it what correction, correction facility uh-huh. but they lost the word correction right because they want that we, we were out to get revenge And uh, yeah. we, it needs to be correction. It needs to be correction. No, there's no jail in there. There's no jail in the tail. That's a fact. That's not a jail. That's a, that's like living in, in a beautiful boca. Yeah. Yeah. See the refuge is boca. That doesn't mean you can commit a crime and not go to jail. No, you you no, you pay. You might pay double, triple. If you steal, you pay double, triple. You put kill somebody, you put to death. They eradicate evil. What do they do to people? They put them in jail. They waste their time. No value. Gain no value. Cost millions of dollars. And that's it. They do nothing. They come out worse than they came in. So what is, what is the purpose? Sometimes they make mistakes. No, but Jericho, what did people do in jail? They just sit there and sit there and sit there. They do nothing. You take valuable people. I'm not talking about people that say murder, whatever. You have uh, other kinds of crimes. You know, they sit there and sit there and sit there. Do nothing. That's the rehabilitation or something. You cannot have rehabilitation if you do nothing. They should have uh, they have to repay back their debts and then go to work and use their talents for good. Put a person and just lock them away five years, ten years, like, you know, they fly years like it's like nothing. And uh, he, should be, he should be locked away and sit and look at the walls for the next ten years. What is that? That's the humanity. That's Eipachanushis. That's the opposite of humanity. There are some who do. There are. The Rebbe said, that, what the Rebbe said, that's why a person that does go to jail we cannot change the system, even though it should change. But uh, they should use it out to become better people. They should realize they should use it out to become better people. Find the time to learn. So I'm to dab in. You have now, you, now you can dab for 10 hours. And you can learn for 20 hours. And uh, it's a learn. Do, do, do nothing. Just sit, look at the wall. Wait for the day you're going to come out. Use your time for, uh, for, for good things. Use your time. They're giving you not half time. If you claimed you had no time, now now you have time. <laughs> but the thing is, what what means what what is this concept? The Gemara says a person was created to do, and now you take away his ability to do. Just sit here and uh, and, and do nothing, wash toilets, or clean floors.
It's not what they're able to create a human being for. And people do make mistakes. A person kills somebody today, even if he, even if he's put on death row for 30 years. Right? If we have all the witnesses there to get 30 years from now. 30 years. For 30 years, this guy was just killed in Alabama. 30 years, he sat there, ate, and the tongue going. From 22, he's 50 years old. What did, what did it do to this guy? No. Yeah, yeah. It's 30 years. It's, it's, yeah, they killed him. 30 years. 30 years. Everybody paid over here 30 years for, uh, for this, uh, for this uh, person who murdered somebody for 30 years. A, a huge but that's what it is, you know. Either, this is the what the this is the, the Abish doesn't do the Taylor doesn't do it. You have to eradicate evil. Guy, there's two witnesses. Okay, it's very hard to kill somebody in Jewish law. But uh but uh what in New York you're allowed to walk into a store and steal up to a thousand dollars worth of murder sauce. That's California. That's California. No, it's New York also. Okay. okay, let's not get involved in politics. So, the main thing over here is that send the off over here. The Alter Rebbe wants to bring out that everybody is born B'Tselem Alekim. Every person, whether you, whether, you're, whether you think you're a tzaddik, you think you're a Russia, you're the biggest sinner, you're a Ghanif, whatever you want to say, you're born in the image of God. And you have within you Eirein Saif. So you have potential. Whatever love you are, you have potential. Never forget you have potential. Because you have a godly entity within you that was inherited to you. You can't even, you can't even deny it, right? It's something that's inherited to you cannot be denied. It's inherited to you. I can't say I don't want the inheritance. It's already inherited to you 3,000 years ago. So you cannot say I don't want the inheritance. You can say I don't want the gift. It's not a gift. This is an inheritance. It was inherited to you. This godly soul. This Avas Hashem, this love of God, this awe of God, this mercy is inherited to you. You cannot deny it inheritance. God bless you all. Have a wonderful, beautiful day. And uh, we'll see you next week. Oh,